Good day, biology. This is Spider-Man, and I'm here to talk about how gene expression caused a spider to bite me and changed the expression of my genes and made me into a spider. You can shoot spiders so it can web, and that would be really freaking awesome, but it's not the case. So, uh, stupid sci-fi, but that'd be really cool if I could shoot spider webs. Uh, but we're going to keep talking about the DNA, but we're going to start transcribing it to RNA today. Uh, hopefully a lot of this is review for you, but we're going to go further. Uh, Tomorrow we get into gene expression more. Today we're going to do more of transcription. Uh, so uh, here we go. Get your notes ready. Uh, there will be short quiz at the end, and maybe not till tomorrow. Okay. So just a little review: the central dogma of biology, the guiding principle of life, DNA to RNA to protein. Um, and we're going to split this into two sections, transcription and translation. Today we are going to be uh, particularly talking about transcription. Uh, this is still just a pretty intro version of transcription. It gets much, much, much complicated as you learn more and more about it. Uh, starting tomorrow, we'll talk about uh, gene regulation, things called uh, operons and things like that. So it'll be kind of cool. Uh, personally, I think this is like the coolest part of biology. It is really what drives life. So uh, everything comes down to this making of proteins, no matter what happens in the cell. Even when we talk about hormones, hormones will come into the cell and actually trigger the nucleus to start these processes uh, or stop these processes. So it really all comes down to this is the central of biology and everything else that you learn is working to control something that's going on here at least in eukaryotic cells in the nucleus bacteria obviously a little different uh, to start just a quick overview of the differences between the genes in eukaryotics and prokaryotics remember prokaryotics are simple bacteria eukaryotics are uh, things like us more complex organisms and our dna is definitely different in the way it works it's the same sequences um, all that is very similar in the DNA, but the things that start the production of proteins, how the genes um, form are slightly different. So we're going to start with the prokaryotic gene, which is simple. I have some uh, drawing representations of them right here. And uh, what happens here is genes are going to be grouped together into something called an operon. So, uh, for example, if... Uh, this bacteria needs to break down lactose. We have a whole lac operon, uh, and it's going to consist of like four different genes, but they're all right next to each other. Um, but each one is actually a separate protein, A, B, C, and D, that form to make um, a working system within the bacteria, like the ability to break down lactose. Uh, to come with that, you have to be able to import lactose, so you need a protein to import lactose through the cell membrane. Uh, you need one to break it down like lactase. So like all of these are the things that are involved in that one area. Um, and we find them right next to each other. Uh, and RNA will have a promoter region, uh, then an operator region, and then you actually have the structural gene. So uh, what will happen is RNA polymerase will attach to the promoter region along with some things called transcription factors. Um, and that'll happen right here, uh, actually at the operator system, and then it'll start writing the mRNA, and we get this nice mRNA, which will eventually be translated to the proteins down here. Um, here's kind of another look at it, kind of seeing DNA. Uh, we have something called the promoter sequence, so that's gonna, what's going to attract these things called RNA polymerase and transcription factors, and then it gets written. Uh, there's always a sequence. This is on both DNAs that terminate uh, the RNA, polymerase, the thing making the RNA, and it kicks it off. And so those are pretty simple. Um, it's pretty cool that you actually have uh, all the structural genes are right next to each other. So like I said, we'll talk about the lac operon a lot starting tomorrow or next week. Uh, but basically, in order for lactose to be broken down by a bacteria, it has to be able to get lactose in. So it's got a protein that uh, will transport lactose into the cell. Uh, lactose needs to be broken down, so it's got a protein that will make lactase. Um, so kind of neat and interesting, and we are starting to learn so much about these. And really what we're going to get into more is how these can be regulated. So we have these regulatory genes. We also have these promoters. All these things, there's parts in here that we can use to control the production of proteins.
eukaryotic genes are going to be a lot more complex um, in the fact that they have these things called exons and introns. Hopefully this is pretty not new to you, uh, but here this picture has the exon in green um, and the introns in light blue, or I guess that's blue too. Uh, yeah, color blind is going on crazy here. Um, and basically what this is, is exons are the good stuff. They're the stuff we want for the genes and introns are the bad stuff. Uh, so exons are segments of DNA that will be translated into a protein. Um, so they're actually going to be coded uh, in translation. And then introns are junk areas of mRNA that will be spliced out of the mRNA. So uh, introns are still going to be written in the mRNA strand, but we're going to get rid of them later. We'll talk about that. Kind of shows it here. These segments get cut out. We get this. Uh, when we get into gene regulation and everything else, also just cool things. Um, especially when we start talking about the immune system and we're trying to fight something like coronavirus and how does our body learn to make antibodies because remember antibodies are proteins so we have to have DNA to make those proteins uh, but we have to end up making proteins in a new shape that we've never made before uh, to fight off diseases to make these antibodies that attach to things and that should be in your head going well how does my body just figure out how to make new proteins with new shapes when all I have is the DNA I already have that tells me what shape to make. Um, and it comes down to these exons. So uh, you can actually change up the order of exons when you make genes. So uh, your B cells that make antibodies actually shuffle around uh, exon orders. So instead of being like exon one is attached to exon two to exon three, it could be exon three is attached to one, is attached to two, and it'll do different combinations of exons. Uh, to actually switch up how a protein is made. And that actually happens a lot in our cells. Um, the human body makes about, uh, we know of about 120,000 different proteins that make you work. Uh, but those are actually only made by about 22,000 genes. So uh, with 22,000 genes, we can actually make 100 some thousand proteins. Uh, it always just gets more complicated and more complicated the more we learn, but it's pretty cool. Uh, so we'll get into these exons and introns and exon uh, shuffling and stuff to make different proteins again a little later. But that is the big difference between the two. Uh, prokaryote, no introns. Uh, everything gets turned into the mRNA and different in eukaryotes is we have these exons um, that need to be, or introns that need to be spliced out. Uh, so if we're actually genetically engineering something and we're trying to make a human gene inside a protein, uh, this can lead to some problems and we have to do a little work to get around this issue. Okay, uh, that leads us to what we're going to cover today. It's gonna to be a pretty short lecture. Uh, transcription occurs in the nucleus of eukaryotes, okay? Uh, remember, if it is in a bacteria, there is no nucleus. It'll just occur in the nucleotide. Uh, it's the process of transcribing the code and DNA into an RNA strand. Um, and then that RNA strand can leave the nucleus and go to the ribosomes to be translated into um, a string of amino acids that eventually becomes a protein. Um, and we're going to break transcription into three steps. Uh, pretty easy in transcription, we'll break translation into the same three steps. Uh, and there's going to be initiation, elongation, and termination. Uh, pretty easy to kind of understand what those all are if you really think about them. And we'll start with initiation. Uh, so first part is, remember our DNA is all wound up into chromosomes. Um, and it's really tightly packed into something called chromatin, if you guys remember right. And so really tightly packed DNA up here, uh, you can't get the enzymes in there to work on it. You can't get RNA polymerase in there. You can't open it up. It's just too tightly compact. So if it's all packed up like this, you're not making any proteins from this DNA. To make proteins, we have to kind of unwind the DNA. Uh, so remember when it's uh, compacted like this, it's wrapped around these red things up here that I'm looking at called histones. Um, and then you get eight histones together and they tightly compact together to form a nucleosome. Um, so in order for uh, transcription to start, we actually have to loosen up the DNA and slightly unwind some of these. So maybe a section in between these two histones as they've been unwound. So like this area here, um, there's some work we can do, some proteins that will attach. Uh, there are actually some acetyl groups that hook onto these histones and they actually loosen 
up little loops of uh, DNA and when they're loosened up, then we can open the DNA like it's seen here and start the process of transcription. So um, before DNA can be transcribed, it must be accessible. Uh, the DNA must be unpacked from the nucleosome and histones begin trans, unpacked from the nucleosomes and histones to begin transcription. So we have to loosen up this stuff where it's packed around these histones and in this group of nucleosomes in this tightly packed DNA in order to um, start transcription. This is really important. This is really what happens why my eyeball is not growing hairs or um, thank goodness my salivary glands aren't making like semen like my prostate would be. Um, they have all the same DNA in those cells, so they all have the capability of doing that, but uh, the cells tightly pack up the other genes that aren't needed for that cell uh, so that they just aren't even really easily accessible unless some serious issues go on. So this is one of the top ways to regulate gene expression is just to uh, compact the DNA and make it so it's not accessible. Um, another way that we can compact DNA and make it inaccessible is something called uh, methylization where you add uh, caps to some of your um, cytosines in here and guanines. Uh, but we'll talk about that later, uh, but just kind of keep it in your mind. So DNA compaction in the nucleosome is one way to control gene expression. So like I said, big way to control gene expression is to uh, have it tightly packed up so it's not even accessible to make a protein. Uh, but that doesn't work for all because just because I have a cell that might make semen or something, sometimes I need to make more and sometimes less. So I still need it accessible so I can't tightly pack it up all the time. Uh, in that case, there's going to be other control mechanisms all the way down the line. Okay. So initiation uh, starts with transcription factors and something called RNA polymerase that attach to the promoter region of a gene. Okay, I'm going to get my picture out here. I guess it's probably here. Um, so every gene is going to have a promoter region. Okay. So maybe it's this yellow, uh, it's a sequence that's going to promote. And what it's going to promote is this enzyme called RNA polymerase, much like DNA polymerase. Um, and it's going to promote this enzyme to attach on here. Uh, this enzyme also opens up the DNA, so it has a helicase function to it uh, without being helicase itself. And it's going to open up and write the DNA. Okay, so um, RNA polymerase is going to attach to the promoter region. Um, and it's going to add nucleotides, very important in this five prime to three prime direction. Uh, just like DNA polymerase does, uh, there is actually three types of RNA polymerase. You're not required to know all of them, uh, but RNA polymerase three is actually what's going to write uh, stuff for proteins. RNA polymerase one and two actually write RNA for things like uh, tRNAs and ribosomal RNA. So uh, they do exist, but not too much different from each other, just slightly different. Um, I mentioned these things called transcription factors. You don't have to know a ton about them, uh, but they're proteins that increase and decrease the transcription of genes, and they also aid in it. So actually what the transcription factors are is you have this RNA polymerase I'm drawing right here. We're just going to call it RNA polymerase, but in real life, RNA polymerase has about six different proteins that attach to it uh, that make it work. One of them is like a helicase transcription factor, um, all kinds of different things attached to this. There's even a tail that comes off it that helps power it and run it. Um, it's a tail of uh, adenines actually. And so uh, transcription factors are things that are gonna bind to this RNA polymerase. And like I said, they can either increase or decrease uh, the transcription rate of genes. Normally transcription factors are going to increase the rate of transcription. Uh, so you're your uh, body might make some extra transcription factors if we need to make more of a gene or something inside your cell. So uh, know that transcription factors are pretty important, but they just bind to RNA polymerase. So for our purpose, we're just gonna call it RNA polymerase. Um, and we're not gonna talk about the three different kinds, but uh, its job is just to write the mRNA strand. So that's elongation, RNA polymerase. Once it's attached to that promoter region um, and initiation, it'll start writing in a five prime to three prime direction. Uh, so you just make a nice mRNA strand, pretty easy. Uh, do need to know these things called a template strand and a coding strand. So the template strand is the side that's going to be the template. So down here we got template. Uh, it's gonna be going from the uh, three prime to five prime because we're writing five prime to three prime here. 
Uh, and that's the side that's going to be, you know, allow the copying. It's where the polymerase is going to attach to and copy. Um, opposite that is the coding strand. And we call this the coding strand because it's going to be the exact same code in the five prime to three prime direction as our uh, mRNA right here in group pink. Our mRNA is going to be the exact same as the coding strand. So uh, when we get into translation, uh, sometimes we'll look at coding strands, sometimes we'll look at the mRNA strand, but uh, these two are identical, but not the ones that are copied because of complementary basing. So do kind of know the difference between template, template and coding strand. Uh, but most importantly, just remember RNA polymerase runs in a five prime to three prime direction and uh, adds nucleotides of mRNA uh, onto the three prime ends and it's going to make our little mRNA strand. Uh, the final section is termination. Uh, there's going to be a termination sequence of DNA in the gene that causes the new mRNA strand to loop up. Uh, and when this RNA strand loops up, it causes RNA polymerase to basically just fall off and uh, DNA um, off the DNA and it stops transcription. So uh, here's kind of some pictures of it. Uh, so. RNA polymerase is making this, it hits a sequence of uh, DNA that gets uh, transcribed and in that sequence, uh, it just causes the RNA to make a little looping thing right here. And that little loop kind of just jostles uh, the RNA polymerase off and the RNA polymerase falls off to go start transcription again, okay? So just keeps making new transcribes as it falls off, it'll just go back and start again as soon as it finds the right promoter region. So that is termination. Uh, like I said, all of this can be much, much more complicated, but that is the most you need to know. Um, and then there's some stuff that has to happen to our mRNA after uh, transcription is complete. So this is gonna be pre-translation, uh, but post-transcription. Uh, and the first thing that's gonna happen is we have a methylated uh, five prime cap. This is gonna be a guanine cap and we add some uh, phosphates to it um, and that's going to be added to the front end of the mRNA and its purpose is going to help when we get to translation it's going to help bind and guide this mRNA into the ribosome it's also going to help uh, push this mRNA through the uh, nucleus membrane to get outside of the nucleus um, don't worry about these untranslated regions okay second uh, we need to splice out all these introns. So remember, this is for eukaryotes. We have all these introns. Um, and so what's going to happen on these is little enzymes come in called spliceosomes. Uh, I should have written those down. I will give them to you tomorrow. Uh, but spliceosomes are going to cause these little intron sections to loop up as well. And then they're going to actually snip and fuse the uh, mRNA back together. So all that's left are our exons. And we now have just the exons that are going to translate into our proper protein. Uh, if you got an intron in there, you're not going to make the right protein. Uh, serious mistakes can happen. And I'm sure it does happen, um, but not that often. Okay, but idea is spliceosomes are going to splice out introns. Uh, and it's done by this little looping action of the DNA or RNA as well. And our last part is a poly A cap is added. Uh, or not cap, we call it a tail, so it's the end. And really all a poly A tail is, is a bunch of adenines are added to the end of our mRNA frame. Um, and that's just going to once again help um, by getting the mRNA strand out of the nucleus and then attaching to the ribosome. Okay, so our three things again are uh, methylated five prime guanine cap. Uh, we have to splice out introns and third at a poly A tail. These will come back into play later. Um, and then the last thing I want you guys to think about, I'm not gonna give you any homework with this, but I do want you to think about it because um, we're kind of gonna get into it tomorrow and I'm probably gonna have you research it more than anything, is we just went over the basics of transcriptions. In cells, the production of genes must be regulated and controlled to maintain homeostasis and for the cell to function properly. So gene expression is huge. Environment, how does it influence genes? There are things I want you to think about and we'll do a little research on. 
But uh, all I want you to do now is brainstorm some ways that transcription could be regulated. Um, so I probably gave you lots of hints, but I really want you to think about those things. And uh, that's good for today. Should have been a short lecture for you. Um, if you have homework to work on or huge, you know, investigations or something, take this time that I'm giving you today to do that and have a wonderful day.